Hello, I'm Luca Coasters and today we'll be reviewing Quandra at Wallaby Belgium. Quandra is an Intamin mega coaster which opened up at Wallaby Belgium in May 2021 and I was fortunate enough to ride it in October of that year, getting a total of 11 rides on it. I've been looking forward to Quandra since we saw the first concept art, but my hype really skyrocketed when it was announced at IAPA 2018 and we saw the layout with all of the stats. The figures given for the forces were downright ridiculous and the layout looked like one of the best ever. During construction my excitement for the ride grew. However, after seeing the first test runs, it definitely didn't look as aggressive as expected. And even after a few months of speed up, it definitely does not match the crazy figures in the animation, especially in the second half. But that does not mean this is bad at all. One thing to note is that this ride speeds up a lot throughout the day, so morning rides pale in comparison to afternoon rides, and also from people who rode it closer to opening, I've heard that it now runs significantly better than the opening few weeks. One of the biggest surprises with Konda was the quality of the theming. The new area is really well done and the station building has excellent theming. The bulk of the queue line is outside and lacks too much theming, but there are some plants and great views of the coaster as well, especially around the drop. When you get to the station you are assigned rows, but most of the time you could ask for a row. Condor also has a single rider line, which naturally you can't choose your row for, however it does save a lot of time when queuing. Condor is definitely good in every row, however I did end up throwing it in the back, so I recommend trying to go for back row. The trains for this coaster are also great. They are most similar to the trains on Red Force, having the extremely open and comfortable intimate over the headlap bars, but on Conda the sides are exposed, making the ride feel even more open. I do prefer the slightly raised up intimate trains, such as those on Tiger or Hyperion, however due to the nature of the ride I don't think they would have fit on Conda. Once the ride dispatches, some cool audio plays before going up the 50 meter lift hill, which also has some music on it as well. This lift hill is a chain lift, like the other new Intamin Megas, but is an extremely fast chain. You quickly crest the lift hill and begin the huge twisted drop. In the front, you start off hanging over the drop, but just before it twists is actually a small bump, where it suddenly gets steeper, which gives some good floater, and then you gracefully twist to the side. In the back, however, this drop is on another level. You start with a dose of strong floater, but just before you twist on the small bump, you are launched out of your seat in a moment of strong ejector before being whipped to the side as the train violently twists. This drop is just insane and one of the best drops ever, combining strong ejector and decent laterals in the back. I've seen a lot of people compare this drop to Expedition G forces, as they definitely seem very similar at face value, however, they actually feel extremely different. Expedition G forces drop has much weaker airtime but much more violent laterals, whereas Conda focuses on the much stronger airtime. Condor's drop actually feels most like let coasters, with the bump just as it twists and more of a focus on airtime. However, I would say that Lex drop has slightly stronger air and better laterals. However, Condor has the benefit of the much better restraints and the fact that it's more sustained. This is just one of my favourite drops ever due to the sheer strength of it, and then the extra dose of laterals as well, which makes it that much more insane. You will then slam back into your seat in an intense valley before rising up into a massive airtime hill. This hill is very tall with a sharp entrance and exit, which means that the airtime won't be as consistently strong throughout the whole hill. In the front row you are violently thrown out of your seat with some strong ejector at first, and you are pinned against your restraint as you crest. After that the air gets slightly weaker, only being strong floater, but that doesn't really matter as you are still being pinned against your restraint from the ejector before, so it still feels crazy. In the back the airtime starts off as floater, which builds into strong ejector as you crest. This makes the ejector feel slightly less sustained, but I do like the flow as it slowly builds up into the ejector. But overall this element is definitely better in the front. This hill actually feels very similar to Goliath at Wallaby Holland's first hill in terms of delivery. However the FM1 Condor is even stronger and more sustained. You are then pushed back into your seat in another fairly intense valley. Although it is not as intense as the previous. The train then rises up and banks to the left as it enters a huge outward bank turn. Unlike the similarly massive outer bank on Steel Vengeance. The transition into this element is extremely smooth, making it less aggressive, however it does make the element feel even more sustained. You receive solid ejector on every row, and it is extremely sustained, lasting for a few seconds. In the front, the entrance into the element feels slightly more violent, but I love how in the back, as you exit the outer bank, the airtime gets even stronger. You're just being flung out of the train with a consistent strength for a few seconds, making it one of my favourite airtime moments in Europe. Whilst the first hill is definitely stronger, I love how consistent the airtime is on this element, and as it doesn't really relent at all, it's just solid ejector for the whole duration of this element. The train then smoothly transitions out of the outer bank and rises up into the non-inverting cobra roll. In the front you start off with decent whip and some floater when twisting out, but it suddenly slows down a lot, making it feel quite unnatural. 
In the back, this twist flows much smoother, so it's less whippy, but the sensation of a float while perfectly rotating is really unique. The train then navigates a surprisingly intense 180 degree turn before navigating the second twist of the element. In the front, it does feel a bit awkward again, as it is not a smooth flow, however in the back you get another great dose of floater while smoothly whipping down. Whilst this element is still fun, it still feels like it's just lacking laterals which would really give it some bite. It really surprised me just how few laterals this element had, making it feel fairly tamed. The ride then goes through a fairly intense valley and rises up into a pretty drawn out ejector hill. This makes the airtime strength more consistent throughout the whole hill, then it also makes it so that every row feels pretty exactly the same on this element. This airtime hill has some decent ejector, feeling very similar to the Expedition G-Force's second hill, just slightly less sustained, but you're still being flung out of your seat and pressed against a restraint for well over a second, whilst flying pretty fast. The coaster then banks to the right and goes through a low to the ground turn, which has some pretty strong and sustained positives, before the train rises up and goes into the wall stall. I expected this element to be a dead spot and completely forceless, but it had some surprising floater, which is also quite sustained. It is by no means aggressive and not on the level of the RMC wave turns, but it's still a fun element and a break from the ejector of the rest of the ride. The train then twists out and goes through another fairly intense overbank which leads into yet another ejector hill. This hill is slightly weaker and less sustained than the previous one, but you're still thrown out of your seat in every single row, although this element is definitely slightly strong in the back. The train then banks to the left and rises up into the bank double down. In the front, the first drop gives a right floater and some laterals which jerk you to the side, and the second gives you a weak floater with similar laterals in the opposite direction. In the back you get similarly strong laterals but combined with a short pop of weak ejector before being thrown to the right and up in a pop of strong floater in the second dip. Whilst this element has solid enough forces, especially in the back, I'm not the biggest fan of how it flows and it feels like the air on this element could have been much stronger if it were more pronounced like the RMC trick track double ups. But nonetheless, this element is still fun. The train then rises off into another airtime hill which gives weak ejector which is also fairly sustained However, the front does feel slightly more strong and violent. Upon exiting this hill, the train banks to the left and navigates a forceless S-bend, which leads into a Stengel dive, which has surprisingly weak laterals, although you do get a brief pop of floater as well. The train then navigates a tiny s hill, which gives a brief pop of floater in all rows. This leads into two further bunny hills, which give extremely brief pops of ejector. Because of how drawn out these hills are, the airtime is very short, and it flows in a weird way, which kind of throws you forward a bit, but it still doesn't feel very aggressive. It would honestly be so much better if these hills were a bit more pronounced like on RMCs, as it would make them feel much more aggressive and fun. The ride then gives one last pop of laterals and strong float when entering the brake run, ending the ride. I do feel like the ending to the ride could have been executed much better, and that would have made Condit an even better coaster. However, the ending is certainly not bad, it just has lots of missed potential. This coaster has one of the best layouts ever, lacking any dead spots and packing so much into the layout, but I feel like overall it is let down slightly by its execution, as it feels like a lot of the airtime moments could have been stronger. The ride also doesn't feel as aggressive as it could have been, which I think is mainly down to the lack of laterals. Conda doesn't really have any elements with good laterals, even where it feels like it should on elements such as the non-inverting cobra, the stangle dive and even the drop. This is surprising as it seemed like Intamin put more of a focus on laterals in their recent rides such as Flying Aces, Hyperion and Taran, in which the laterals actually outshine the airtime on those rides. I feel like with laterals, Conda would have felt much more aggressive and brought this ride into an even higher tier. But I can't really complain, as we've got a ride filled with ejector, a great drop, great positives, with one of the best layouts ever. Even the parts I thought would be dead spots ended up still being fun, and the lack of dead spots definitely boosts this ride in my rankings. This ride really feels like Intamin Steel Vengeance, having one of the best layouts ever, but lacking slightly in aggressiveness, although Steel Vengeance is definitely still a level above Conda. With all that being said, despite its flaws, Conda is still excellent and worth travelling to ride, so I have to give Conda a solid 10 out of 10. Let me know what you think of this Intamin Mega in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe.